our show today, we have a special guest in our studio, author Mary Doria Russell. She may not be very famous, yet she is one of the most creative and prolific authors. You may have heard her in her first and most famous novel, The Sparrow, which she will explain the process behind today. Please welcome Miss Russell, everyone. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Besides The Sparrow, have you written other works? Can you tell us what those are? Absolutely. After The Sparrow, I also wrote the novels Children of God, A Threat of Grace, Dreamers of the Day, and my most recent one, Doc. I, I tend to write science and historical fiction, as shown in my most famous novel, The Sparrow. Let's discuss how The Sparrow came about. While reading the novel, we as readers noticed that religion was a central role in the story. Why is that? Well, I was brought up as a Catholic but left the church when I was 15. After 20 years of being an atheist, I realized that my morals were based in religion and I had to transmit the culture to my son. I believe this, influ I believe this influences my writing greatly as my writing is based on the religion and Christian teachings. Interesting. Can you tell us a little about your novel? Basically, the novel is in two frames. It starts in the year 2059 when priest Emilio Sandoz is returning from an alien mission and has just been released from the hospital. He struggles to tell other Vatican priests and press what occurred, and the storyline continually reverts back to the past. The mission began because ra alien radio signals were received from a planet Alpha Centauri, and they traveled on an asteroid to discover the extraterrestrial life. What started as a life-changing and historical mission quickly turns ugly. Wow, fascinating. Can you tell us about some of the characters? Well, the main character is Vatican priest Emilio Sandoz, who is the only survivor of the mission. Jimmy Quinn is the reason behind the discovery of the radio signals, and he eventually marries Sofia Mendez. She is an unbiased, intelligent woman who came from a rough past. Supari is one of the aliens who is an ambitious merchant on the planet. He helps the crew find an alternative fuel after they have run out. My personal favorite character is Emilio because, because we learn a lot about him and his character development. He goes from being a very pious priest to being a broken, faithless mess. I personally identify with him because religion played a huge role in my life and I lost faith for a while, but regained it later and has, ult and has ultimately shaped, shaped my character. What are some of the themes expressed in this book? I feel as if the novel is centered on religion like I talked about earlier. Additionally, a big theme that is prevalent is humanity as Emilio experiences a change in faith and the mission learns that humans and the Janata race are completely different in their conduct regarding other humans. Truth, truth is common through the events in the book as humans realize that the aliens have different morals, yet they are similar in other ways. Because religion is explored in this book, truth endorses the religion aspect of it because there are many because many people have faith in religion, but there are many conflicting ideas about what is true. Wow, what do you think is the most meaningful phrase in the book, and what does it symbolize? I personally the quote, the ability to speak a language perfectly does not necessarily confer any linguistic understanding of it. Just as one may play billiards well without any formal understanding of Newtonian physics. I feel as if it symbolizes that one may be good at something, yet they do not fully comprehend the meaning of it. Interesting. Well, thank you for being on our show. We'll see you next time on the Dr. Phil. Thanks again for watching Dr. Phil. Here's a preview for the upcoming movie, The Sparrow. Yes? It says on the news that there's been detection of alien life. I'm Emilio Santos and we're on a mission to Rakat. We're on a mission to go find where the radio transmissions came from. Right now we're on an asteroid that we built and we're flying there. It'll take years to get there, but in the end the mission will be accomplished. I think I see people moving. Hey, what's that over there?
welcome to our show today. That's not like a free part. <laughs> what is that over there? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> My finger's covering it. I'm so. Yeah, <laughs>